With the release of Sunbreak, Powdered Kinsex became one of my favorite Kinsex to run. If you've never tried them out or you want to get better with them, grab a wire bug with me and let's head on out. Welcome back hunters, Sky Sensei here with a quick tips video. I've had some people ask me about my powdered kinsex and how to use them, and I realized I've talked about them in various videos, but I've never really actually talked about everything as a whole, so I thought I'd compile some tips just into one video here. If you haven't yet tried out powdered kinsex in Sunbreak, especially with the new powder vortex skill, this video will definitely be very helpful to you because it does require a slightly different playstyle compared to the other kinsex. Now this tips video isn't super high level so if you're a very experienced veteran glaive hunter I'm sure you know most of these tips so I'd really appreciate it if you could still like the video to make sure that YouTube sends this to the new glaive hunters that are part of the community. Now there are two powdered kinsex in Sunbreak onwards and I will note here at the start that if you're planning to use the new powder vortex bomb that is only available with the Sunbreak kinsex. The older powdered kinsex cannot use this skill and they are slightly slower than the newer ones so overall they're not entirely worth to use until you get to the sunbreak content. Now, I'm not saying that the early powdered kinsex are bad, they just aren't entirely worth DPS or status wise. So as we go through the video I'll talk about each point from the perspective of both the kinsex that are available including the Bilbo Bricks which is the Sever Blast kinsect and the Lady Tower which is a Blunt Paralysis kinsect. One of the first changes to your playstyle that you'll need to make when using the powdered kinsex is to basically forego the use of kinsex recall. If you weren't aware, kinsex recall basically brings your kinsex back to you, but it can also be used by glaive users to cancel their final heavy attack animation just a little bit earlier so that you can move around earlier like normal. It's not the biggest time save, but it's always nice to have that extra flexibility earlier. With Powdered Kinsex however, you can't really perform this skill as often. You don't want to stop your Kinsex from forming powders every time you do an attack. So for those of you coming from Assist Kinsex into Powdered Kinsex, that's definitely going to be one of the biggest changes you'll have to make early on. You want your Kinsex out there as much as possible to kind of create as many powders as you can. Because some of them you will be blowing them up unfortunately because of just your timing or like the monster might break some and you might hit some as well. So the more powders that are out there, the more chances you'll have to damage or status the monster. The only real good time to use the Kinsect Recall is when your Kinsect is about to run out of stamina. Then you might as well just finish your attack, animation cancel with the Kinsect Recall, and then let your Kinsect recharge its stamina. Tip number two. Just want you guys to be aware that there are two ways to mark the monster in case you weren't aware of this. A ranged option and a close up option. The ranged option is the Kinsect Fire Attack. This is performed by holding down the special action button, aim with your movement key, and then fire. For mouse and keyboard you have to click the wire bug button to shoot the marker. On controller you press the left trigger. If you are up close to a monster, after any attack you can do a swinging marking hit which does have a decent motion value attack. Keep in mind that this attack swings from left to right, so if you are attempting to aim this attack, be a little bit more angled to the right. The attack is going to swing behind your head and then around from the left towards the right, so it's going to hit whatever is on the left side first. Okay, so those were the two of the general tips that I wanted to talk about. Let's talk about the two main kinsex now before we move on to the next tips. Bilbo Bricks is a sever type kinsex, so ideally for this kinsex, you want to mark the tail and let it attempt to cut the tail while creating powders. This is actually super ideal because then you can go for the head and damage the head of the monster while your kinsect creates powders behind. This strat leads you to blowing up less of the powders by your own glaive and thus you can utilize the powder vortex bomb and get much more damage much quicker. Another option for the billow bricks is to mark monster bodies with high element hit zones. Several kinsects do apply element damage on top of their normal damage unlike the blunt kinsects which maintain raw damage. So if you're using a glaive that has an element matchup to the monster, marking spots that you wouldn't normally hit with your glaive like the tail or the hind legs or the back are a good option to kind of keep your kinsect away from you, have the powders appear a little bit away from your glaive itself so that you're not popping any of them and then you still be able to focus the monster parts that you need to focus. The second kinsect is the Lady Tower, a blunt paralysis powder kinsect. Now Lady Tower is considered a CC Kinsect at its core, so ideally you want to mark the head for the monster every time. The more hits the Lady Tower gets, the faster you can actually KO the monster. 
With the Lady Tower, you can definitely get at least two stuns on a monster. Now, of course, this does make it harder to avoid blowing up your own powder since Glaive is also a weapon that ideally likes to hit the head. And I'll mention in the next section why this isn't actually such a big deal. Alright, next up, let's talk about using this powder vortex bomb. If you are focusing damage, I recommend the Bilbo Bricks. The Blast Powder Kinsek definitely is much stronger if you focus this. Most of its damage actually comes from the big explosion and it has a higher motion value for this attack compared to the Lady Tower. So because of this, you will want to change your playstyle to kind of stop any actions that affect or stop your Kinsek. The first tip of this video applies to this Kinsek particularly since the more powders you can have out there, the higher your damage will be. You will achieve max damage from the Kinsect at 7 powders. There's no more higher than that. If you get any more powders after that, the damage will not change. Now of course this might be hard honestly, since your weapon also blows up the individual powders, sometimes gathering 7 may be difficult, plus the monster might also have certain attacks that can blow them up, particularly any element damage attacks. So the longer you wait to collect these powder, the more risk you run of losing all the powders at once. So as I mentioned before, it's better to mark a body part that's farther away from where you're damaging, collect 4 to 5 powers, and then let that sucker go. Additionally, you should reduce or time the use of your Kinsek Slash skill. This skill automatically pulls back your Kinsek, so try to use it a little bit less. The more your Kinsek stays out, again, the more powers you'll have. So ideally, you want to time this to kind of use your Aerial and Kinsek Slashes when your Kinsek is running low on stamina. This will automatically recall your Kinsek, and start its stamina regen while you get some damage in instead of you know waiting until your kinsect comes back to you and then realizing that oh it's out of stamina it's recharging now i can do some kinsect slash if you time it well so that just when it's running out of stamina you do a kinsect slash you can get some more kinsect slash in increase your aerial charge get some good aerial damage and by the time you land on the ground you're ready to send your kinsect back out into the field final tip for this bilbo bricks Using Tetraseal is a big struggle with it and it makes things a bit more complex. For Bilbo Bricks, this is not ideal because Tetraseal marks the monster wherever you hit. So if you have powders around the head or wherever you're hitting, they're most likely going to get blown up. So ideally using Tetraseal is not the play when it comes to using the Bilbo Bricks Kinsect. However, if you are using the Lady Tower Kinsect, the previous changes aren't as necessary. I would still not recommend using Kinsect Recall because of course you want your Kinsect out there making powders. Kinsect Slash however, you are better off timing your aerial attacks when your Kinsect is running low on stamina. That way you're still applying status as you attack with the Kinsect Slash, you're still getting good damage in and you're leveling up your aerial charge which you can use for a finisher. Tetraseal is the complete opposite though with Lady Tower. In my opinion Tetraseal is great because it marks the target. Now, if you are going for the heads let's say, you will automatically mark it when you use Tetraseal and you'll get your Kinsect to start adding some stun damage to the head and also creating some paralysis powders. Now why I think Tetraseal is great with this Kinsect is because generally speaking, the use of Powder Vortex isn't as necessary with the Lady Tower. It is a status Kinsect at its core so treat it like one, treat it as if it's just building up paralysis over time, rather than thinking that you need to quickly get in a large amount of status to output and paralysize. Even if you break the individual powders while attacking, the status still gets applied. Now technically speaking, yes the powder vortex does apply more status quicker, but it also takes some more time to gather and you risk having the powders blown up. But yes, technically speaking, the more you can fit in, you might be able to get 3 to 4 paralysis in a certain hunt depending on the monster's uh, tolerance versus like 1 to 2. So for me, I enjoy using it as just kind of like a building up over time. But there are situations where you can use the bomb. Here's an example, Mizu moves quite far when they get knocked and I knew I wouldn't be able to get much damage in. My powders were also wasted so instead I powder vortex in front of Mizu as they started to get up. That resulted in a paralysis which I could then get some damage in. So this was just an example that you know I was just doing my own thing getting my damage and blowing up the small powders. But when I saw the opportunity I used the powder vortex to then get a paralysis giving me a window to damage the monster. So overall, don't worry too much if you don't get many bombs off at the Lady Tower. It's a status Kinsect, you'll be able to get those over time throughout a hunt. But if you see an opportunity, be sure to take it. This brings me to my next tip. You can cancel and move the powders during a hunt if the monster repositions or something. The use of the Kinsect recall animation actually cancels the collection of the powder vortex and stops the powders exactly where they are. 
You can then move your kit stick to another location and then start that whole process of the powder vortex to collect it again and it'll actually bring all of the powders over as long as they are within range. Now of course this does come with a risk that all monsters can blow up all of your powders and thus wasting your damage and time. So I wouldn't rely on this too much but just in the special cases if the monster moves away or gets knocked far away or they exhaust further away or they reposition or if they go towards another hunter in a multi hunt you know a couple of these very specific situations is a good time to use this technique. And this brings us to one final point for this video. Powder Kinsex works really well with the Wirebug skill Awaken Kinsex Attack. When you use this skill it actually spawns 5-6 to six powders instantly meaning you can immediately go into a powder vortex skill to get some damage or some quick status. There are two good times to use this. Number one, when your buffs start to flash indicating that you're about to run out. Since you're going to lose your extracts anyway, you might as well try to get some damage or status out of it. If you have the lady tower, you could get a paralysis or a stun out of this attack with the powder vortex skill afterwards. That'll give you a window to kind of get your buffs back quick and then get some damage in. The second time that's good to use this skill is when the monster is exhausted or doing a large attack that will result in probably a big downtime either before or after the attack. Enough time that you know you'll actually be able to get your buffs back. Here's an example where I know that the anomaly explosion takes a while and it also exhausts the monsters afterwards. So I decided to throw the awakened kinsect attack out. My kinsect gained the white extract after hitting the monster so I had that back and then I used the kinsect slash on the head to get the red buff just so I could attack at any moment. The part break was honestly pretty lucky here but I had my red buff so I was ready to damage. After landing I used the powder vortex to build up paralysis and I went in for damage. So that just about sums up my tips video for using the powdered kinsec. These aren't too complex as I mentioned before but it's just kind of something for you guys to get your foot in the door with learning the powdered kinsec. If anyone has any other suggestions be sure to leave a comment below. I'll pin anything that I may have missed. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this helps out some of you new glaive gamers. And if you have any friends who want to try glaive as well be sure to send this to them. So until next time hunters stay safe be happy and keep hunting. Sky Sensei is out.